Thank you for tuning in to part two of the city and county business license process. This video will cover additional information that business owners should be aware of. I will also include tax incentives and other funding sources for disabled access improvements. Now let us get started. Changing the occupancy of a business usually requires a submittal of construction drawings and a permit application. An example of a change in occupancy is if you will be converting a retail store to a restaurant use. So check with your planning and building departments in advance. Also, please be aware that often what may seem as insignificant improvements, such as the installation of sales or service counters, display racks, and restriping of the parking area, will require building department clearances for the purpose of verifying to the disabled access requirements, amongst other requirements. I now lift my pen to sign this Americans with Disability Act and say, let the shameful wall of exclusion finally come tumbling down. Regarding disabled access requirements, first we need to establish that the definition of disability is broad under the Americans with Disabilities Act, and it is even broader under California law. And in brief, the purpose of disabled access requirements are to help eliminate discrimination against people with disabilities. Ensuring that your business is accessible to the disabled not only achieves state and federal law, but it also expands your market. With that said, businesses are required to make disabled access improvements for all new construction under state and federal laws. However, under current federal and state law, you may limit the cost of additional disabled access upgrades to your business improvements to 20% of the construction costs. If the cost of your business construction is under the state of California's valuation threshold as shown in this website. So please be sure to discuss the 20% disabled access improvements requirements with your local building department before embarking on your improvements. You may also seek the services of a certified access specialist to evaluate your business location for disabled access requirements. The CASP professional can provide you with a variety of services from consultation to full inspection services. And although it is not legally mandated to attain CASP services, the good faith effort of hiring a CASP may lessen your liability and provide certain legal benefits if an accessibility claim is filed against your business. Here are two important things to consider as it relates to lease agreements and disabled access requirements. Number one, California law requires a landlord or commercial property owner to state on every lease form or rental agreement whether or not the premises have been inspected by a certified access specialist. And number two, both the landlord and tenant should specify within the terms of the lease who is responsible for which areas of the facility. And in terms of who has responsibility for ADA compliance in leased places of public accommodation, ADA places the legal obligation on both the tenant and the landlord. So please consult with your attorney and the Department of Justice for Legal Obligations and ADA Compliance. Here is information related to the state CASP program for business and property owners. And on this site, you can view a list of top 10 alleged construction-related ADA violations in California. This can also be a great information tool for business owners. Now, fortunately, there are government tax incentives and financing opportunities available to help you with the ADA expenditures. And here is a list of these incentives. This link shows tax incentives you can take advantage of, which includes name of the tax incentive, businesses that are eligible for the tax incentive, examples of disabled access improvements that qualify for the tax incentive, as well as the monetary amounts you can get towards the improvements. Eligible small businesses can also take advantage of tax credits for ADA improvements through the California Franchise Tax Board. And through the California State Treasurer, eligible small businesses can take advantage of financing programs for Americans with Disabilities Act improvements amongst other funding opportunities. So whether you are a new or existing business owner, you both can take advantage of these incentives. So check them out. Conducting historic research on a business site has its benefits. 
This allows you to see if there are any potential issues that could restrict the issues of a business license. Here is information that could help you make fiscally responsible decisions. Are there any expired building permits? Expired building permits can add monetary burdens. Are there any open code enforcement violations? Unresolved violations could add to the cost of starting a business and create delays. Is your business site in a flood hazard zone? This is important information to know because substantial improvements made on such properties usually require additional upgrades to be made to the structure. Is the building fire sprinklered? Many cities and counties have fire sprinkler ordinances which require the installation of fire sprinklers in unsprinklered buildings as a result of alterations. Is the building an unreinforced masonry building? This is especially the case if the building was built prior to 1945 and if it was built of brick, cinder block, adobe, or other masonry materials. Often improvements of any kind to such buildings require structural upgrades. Here is a helpful document which shows the state regions and a list of California cities that may have unreinforced masonry buildings. This document even includes the listed cities and counties mitigation efforts, so check it out. However, if your building department is in these affected regions, please check with them for additional disclosures. This new law I bring to your attention requires certain industrial businesses to obtain a State of California Water Board's permit. The mandate requires that cities and counties verify that such permit has been obtained through the State of California Water Boards as a condition to the business license. This mandate does not affect all businesses, however, please contact the State Water Boards to find out if this mandate applies to your business. And here is a frequently asked questions handout, which could be of help. Well, this concludes the city and county business license series. And once again, I wish you a prosperous venture and always keep your eyes on the prize. Until next time, take care and be well.